Hello and welcome. Today we have a Bernina 1000 designer. I'm going to do a buyer's guide slash assessment video. You know they come with this uh, heavy canvas case, it's got a dust cover case, so it's quite handy to have. That's the original dust cover. The accessories for this one, uh, that is not the original accessory tray. Just a little, um, a little pouch. It looks like most of the accessories are, are there. And of course if you're looking at picking up a machine like this, you want to make sure it's got the foot controller and the flex cable. Although if it doesn't, I'm, I'm sure you could um, pick one up. From my experience, there's not a lot that goes wrong with these machines at all. They are Swiss made and very robust, reliable machines. Uh, there, there's a couple of small things to, to look for if you're looking at picking one up or if you have one uh, already and the, you know, you're not sure what sort of condition it is in, it would pay to, you know, just uh, check a few things out first before you get back into sewing with it. So you've got your main uh, power plug here that plugs into the side of the machine there. And this end of the cable here plugs into the foot controller here. It can only go one way. It's, it's keyed so you can't get it wrong. And then obviously just your power plug plug in there. Turn the machine on. Okay, got light here, that's a good start. Now when I'm testing machine, uh, there's a couple of ways you can run the machine without having to have fabric under the foot there. Is one is just um, unthread the needle and the take up there. In fact I would pull the thread right out just in case you don't want any threads tangling in, in the mechanism here. That thread's pretty grotty. I'll be uh, probably just binning that. Make sure the presser foot is in the up position. You don't want the feed dogs wearing on the bottom of the presser foot on the sole there whilst you're running the machine with no fabric. You can also, you know, if you wanted to, you could disengage the clutch here. Just hold the hand wheel and twist this knurled wheel here anti-clockwise. That disengages the clutch there. And then just see what we have. Zilch. We had something there. That's not a good sign. Okay. Well, um, it looks like we've got a problem. Now there could be several reasons for this. The the motor could be uh, dead, or not completely, because it does it did move there. Or the foot controller could be faulty. There's a capacitor in here as well. You'll find that if you've got a machine like this that takes off all of a sudden, it just you know, as you're putting your foot down, nothing happens, nothing happens, and then it just flies off at full speed or close to full speed. That can be just a capacitor that's failing in the foot controller. So, um, I'll do a separate video showing you how to get into the foot controller and put it back together. They're quite fragile, um, they're not fragile when they're complete, they're fragile. Um, They've got two little carbon brushes in them that are quite fragile, so when you're putting them back together, you do need to be very careful. Yep, we've got a little problem there. There could be a problem with the switch here. No, okay. All right, well, that's going to take some investigation. I'll, I'll, pro I'll probably just leave that for a separate video actually, the troubleshooting on that. This is really just a quick assessment video and um, buyer's guide. The one thing to quickly check with your machine is that these dials aren't seized up. Now that 
that dial is very tight so that is a sign that you know this machine has probably been sitting for quite a while so this is your stitch width dial it's very tight should be nice and loose the needle centering or the needle positioning knob there is nice and free the buttonhole knob won't I can't get it to one so there's something going on there so yeah I would say that this machine has been sitting the stitch length knob is nice and free um, just make sure that the stitch length is not set to zero um, you know otherwise this lever will not move and you uh, can set that off zero by turning this knob anti-clockwise and you'll see the stitch length will increase so just take that right down to five and that should move freely up into the reversing position there if the if this lever doesn't move down when you unscrew this well then maybe there's some sort of problem in behind here seizing or something like that the other thing to check too is if you are having trouble with some of these levers not doing what they should it could just be that the machine is set into a buttonhole step already you know it could be around like I can't turn this one because it's there's a problem but if it was set say on on four you might find that this um, these levers are uh, not responding the way they should that that's quite normal you know to see that sort of thing if it is part way through a buttonhole uh, so just make sure that's on zero the buttonhole selector is on zero when you test these knobs here we've also got the stitch selector lever here and that should be free to move also so push it to the right and slide it should slide nice and freely no problem there whatsoever give the machine a um, you know a turn by hand so you know the needle bar should move up and down just make sure that the clutch is engaged when you do test that if the clutch is disengaged you'll be able to turn the wheel but the needle bar won't won't move so make sure that is engaged and turn you should get things happening there just the other thing to check too is the drop feed knob here make sure that's free check in behind the door there we have a bobbin case which is sometimes missing if you've come across a machine in the wild just make sure that you've got the bobbin case no big deal if you don't they're still available and we can see here that this machine has a rotary hook which is very nice so more like an industrial type design whereas uh, some machines have an oscillating type hook you can easily get into these machines just by remove the plate here just by lifting the front of the plate and pushing the plate to the rear that will come out like so might pay to remove the needle and the presser foot is easy to remove by pulling this lever up and the presser foot should just drop off like that it also pays to check the bobbin winder um, you know that that moves to its engaged position and when you turn the wheel that should turn um, it's difficult to test fully without having power to the machine I can't test it fully now still got no power there the bobbin winder rubbers can wear and it will make the bobbin winder noisy when it's under power um, but that that's easily repaired as well so no problems there yeah I mean that's about it really for a for a quick check of the machine I'll show you quickly also how to check the uh, capacitors here but what I have to absolutely stress is to make sure that the machine is unplugged from the power there and don't I mean we're going to be removing this panel and we're going to be removing this rear panel here and this is where the danger is if the machines plugged in and powered on this danger of electric uh, shock in behind here so just make sure that plug is removed and that goes for any machine that you 
want to get into um, really, you know, by rights when you're working on it, you should really unplug it just to be safe. So we'll start by removing this side cover here. Who knows, maybe it's it's going to be obvious as to why we've got no power. But let's um let's take a wee look here. Just a um Phillips screw. You don't need to remove that screw completely. Just loosen it until that ring will undo. And this ring here, just take note when you're removing it, these, these three little pieces here, they are raised slightly. So they, I can feel them raised here. So that is on the outside of the ring here. I can feel raised there. Don't worry too much about taking note of where this is as far as the orientation goes because we'll work that out when we put the hand wheel back together. So interestingly, you know, we've got a Phillips screw here and we've got posi drive screws here. Now, um, I'll talk about this a little bit. The posi drive screws are a little bit different to a Phillips and if you can, try and use a posi drive screwdriver. Uh, if you don't have a posi drive screwdriver, you can, at a pinch, get away with using a Phillips. But it will slightly damage the screw head, and that's why I like to use the right screwdriver there. Uh, so we'll get those two screws there out. And then, next thing to do is to pull the this lever, this uh, switch here off. That just pulls straight out. Should just pull off, you know, with a little bit of force, not much. You shouldn't really need to use any excessive force. If you do, um, there's risk of breaking things and, um, you know, there's something else wrong. So, yeah, if you find you're having to use excessive force, it might pay to, um, uh, you know, take the machine to your local sewing machine mechanic. So there we have the switch off there. Now we just need to tip the machine back here. And there's a screw, a screw here flathead screw this time. Bernina wanted to make sure that you had a, f a full array of screwdrivers available. But certain screw head types suit certain jobs and sometimes a straight head screw is, is the way to go. Uh, and while you're down here you might as well uh, remove this screw here that's for the back panel. So while you've got the machine laid back like that that screw is longer. So the back panel screw is a long one. The side panel uh, screw from underneath here is a sort of a medium length. So this panel should come off. Now, yep, so the the hand wheel's coming free. In fact, it, it would have come free before. It was just, it was bound onto this um, brass bush here a little bit. So I just need a little a little bit of um, gentle persuasion there and then you need to line up these screw mounts here with these holes in the casing here like that and then we remove the screw here another flathead screw there that's that's quite a short screw that one we should be able to just yeah so I, I just pushed this edge here in that direction and that should just, with a little bit of working there, or is there, is there another screw? I think that's just clipped in there. Seems to be catching down here. I think that's just a plastic clip. Yeah, seems to be sort of jammed there. I don't want to put too much force on there, it might break it. But I think we can get the whole rear panel off as well now. So the rear panel is just these screws here. Oh, they're tight. 
I suspect that this machine has never been serviced in its life because normally those screws aren't that tight. So, yep, I don't know, I guess this is a 90s machine, judging by the uh, design on the front. Okay, should be able to remove that cover now. Switch these screws. That hole. Yeah, so, so yeah, because the Oh, there that these two panels are coming apart now yeah just clips in there and obviously it's just um, rather than force it and potentially break the clip so I took the two panels off at once so there's the panels oh, the other thing to look for is the quite often I see these thread posts are damaged here these ones are fine uh, but quite often what can happen is the, um, I think in some of the earlier models, or might, yeah, might have been the earlier models, these, these posts were metal, and they quite often uh, got bent, and they would either stick down and stay down, or uh, you couldn't put them down. But they, they're fine, they are replaceable. You get in, uh, in here and, and remove these clips here, you can replace those. Okay, this is the uh, danger area when it comes to electrical safety. As I say, make sure the power plug's been unplugged from the machine there. And you can see here we've got a switch here. So one's for the lamp and one's for the motor. We've got the lead for the lamp here and the motor leads. Uh, I'll get, get you a close look here in a second, but under here we've got the uh, motor brush access port. Now the problem with this machine not uh, driving, potentially the motor not working, could be that the motor brushes are worn completely out and have damaged the motor, but I'm not sure. Let's have a quick look. Should be able to, yeah, I've got that little access door. So the little access plug there has actually come off there, I just moved it. There we go. So we might actually be able to get in here without removing much at all. So what I want to do is I want to bend up this little this little tongue here. We'll get a fine screwdriver. So let's try and get in there and ease this tongue here up. There we go. Springs come out, but the um, the tongue isn't back far enough there for the rest to come out. So I'll I'll just get a uh, little pair of long nose pliers here and just gently bring that back, and that should give us enough room, hopefully, to bring the brush out. I think this needs a little bit more of a tweak just at the at the base of the this little tongue here. Try and get the brush back in the same way as you take it out. That's, that's one of the keys. But anyway, that I mean, I, I don't really have to take that right out to know that you know there's plenty of. Um, life left in that brush for sure, no worries whatsoever. So we'll go ahead and put that back together. A little awkward there. Just like so. You don't want to be doing that too often. I've seen these little tongues break off which is a bit of a pain when they do and then just uh, put the cap 
place the cap back on there and we'll make an assumption that the other brush is fine so it's not the motor brushes causing this issue with the motor so anyway I'll go ahead and get the motor problem sorted and um, come back when that's done and we'll carry on with the assessment video there's not much more to do from here so after a, a quick bit of uh, diagnosing if you want to see how I've fixed this take a look at the video I'll list up top right here and that is the video where I show you know what the uh, the fix for this uh, motor issue is and it turns out uh, you know spoiler alert that it's just this little uh, capacitor that's gone dead in the foot controller so I just showed how to you know run through a few sort of basic troubleshooting procedures and um, I just had a gut feeling that this could have been causing the, the problem uh, it also causes other issues as well so just swapping that out fixed the problem so the machines all up and running there now you know apart from that I think this machines you know going to be a really good runner and it's um, repaired now it's a fairly straightforward repair so it's not really a huge deal all that's really required now is probably a service of the machine I just temporarily put a screw in there for testing just one screw up here You know, as I said before, there's not a lot that goes wrong with these machines. They're very reliable. There's there's no real weak points. I mean, that capacitor, yeah, okay. Um, but that's, you know, a cheap off-the-shelf item. I don't know of any cams that tend to fail or anything like that. You know, cam stack gears or any gears that fail in these. They, You know, I, I think for reliability, um, this, this type of Benina... You, you can't really go past. I mean, you know, obviously I've got some issue here with this binding up, but that's really just caused by a lack of maintenance and sitting for a long time. So I will go through and I'll do another video um, showing how to fix this issue. Um, but in the meantime, I'll show you how to put the covers back on. So this cover here, just make sure that the presser foot lifter lever goes through there. And then it's just a matter of getting these screws back in here. I'll also go through and service this machine while I'm at it. Uh, and obviously it needs servicing anyway with that seizing of those control knobs like that. There's definitely something going on there. And I think once that's done, this will be a, a nice, a really nice little machine. I mean, that if if looked after, you know, I think a machine like this would just go for for many more decades. I'm sure, you know, um, so quite easily could be passed down through generations. I mean, it, you know, it, it's restricted in, in certain ways by you know limited uh, stitch designs and whatnot it's not electronic or anything like that but uh, you know a really good mechanical machine you can do pretty much anything uh, well within reason I mean you've got buttonholing you've got straight zigzag stitch you've got a blind hemming stitch you've got an applique type stitch stretch stitching uh, drop feed for darning you know, uh, nice, good, easy controls. I mean, you can't you can't go wrong. It's, you know, for uh, intermediate, beginner, intermediate, even to advanced depends. You know what sort of sewing you're doing, but um, I think uh, it's a brilliant machine and it beautifully made. Can't go wrong. So I just need to. I just temporarily put this knob here on to um, do the testing. And then we get the side cover, put the side cover on, we need to line up these lugs here with these holes on the side, that just slips on like that, 
clips on, use the short screw, just that short screw there, like so. Might as well put the switch back on there. It's all good. And then put the hand wheel back on. Just line up the two screw holes there. That. that and then put the ring on with the little stubs uh, sticking out Pro they protrude slightly on the front side on this right hand side put this on provisionally here easiest way to do this is just tighten this wheel up like that and then I bring and then I turn the machine until that's at top you know top dead center there and then holding the wheel we don't want the wheel to turn at all undo this again if you can the best position to have this little lug here is at you know just past the 12 o'clock position because the little retaining screw here the stopper screw is stopping at 12 o'clock up here so you know you want that lug to be sort of just past 12 so that position's probably not so good there you've only got three positions I think for this have you oh no there's only one way this oh yeah that's too um, too soon so the stopper is going to hit the stopper screw is going to hit that before it gets a chance to actually tighten keep going That's that's probably the best position there for it, at all three positions. So you know the uh, little stopper screw, the hand wheel is going to tighten, and the stopper screw is going to stop it at 12 o'clock when it's tight. You, then you've got all of this movement down here when you undo the screw to come to this stopper here to loosen the clutch. So you, that's probably the best position for it there. Tighten that and then just tighten the stopper screw there. And then test it. Yep, that's driving the machine nicely there. And then undo. So that's just bob and winding position there. And while I'm at it, I might just quickly check that bobbin winder because sometimes the the little rubber wheel on the bobbin winder can get worn and it can make them quite noisy. Yeah, that's fine. Yep, sounding good. Yeah, it ne needs a service. It's a bit, um, a little bit noisy. I'll go ahead and do that. We can just get the plate back on here. We just come in from behind there, set the plate on, bring it forward until it locates. There's a little locator here, a little pin and hole here. And um, yeah, should be all all set to go there. Ah, oh, better not forget to put the two screws here back on for the covers wouldn't do those up too tight they don't need to be overly tight they will break the nut retaining plastic that's it so there we go I, I think that's going to be a nice little runner in fact I uh, will do a basics video I think once I get this problem here sorted out so I hope you found that helpful and thank you very much for watching.